Well, today I want to start with a story. About 10 years ago, I got myself into a big pickle that would cause me to make a major life change. At the time, I was working as an experienced designer at a healthcare organization. And one day I ended up on the wrong side of the CEO. See, I have this tendency to share my opinions with people that I respect. And I also have this entrepreneurial kind of spirit. So when you combine those two things together with a CEO that doesn't like to be challenged, well, things don't turn out well. At least they didn't for me. Now, let me set this record straight. I did not lie. I did not say anything inappropriate, but I didn't play politics well. And I got caught sharing with a board member my true feelings about a situation. And to be honest, I can't even remember what the situation was. But I do remember that the CEO didn't like it. He was so angry with me for talking to a board member that he yelled at me and then gave me the silent treatment. But the consequences of my big mouth didn't end there. The next thing I knew was I was being hauled in front of a committee of doctors to defend my job. Now, while trying to contain my fear, I explained to that committee all of the work that I had done that benefited the organization. Now, finally, the committee decided that my job was safe. And at first I felt relieved, but then I felt really angry. Now, I value integrity and honesty. And I didn't think that my speaking my mind and being honest about my thoughts and feelings should have caused me to defend my job. I thought it was an overreaction from someone who was supposed to be a leader, but wasn't acting like one. And I decided right then and there that I would never go through a situation so awful and humiliating again. And I would never treat people the way that he treated me. So I opened an agency. Never mind that I had no idea how to run an agency or how to market or sell or manage people or even read a balance sheet. In fact, I think if I had known what I was getting myself into, I would not, not have even started that agency. My path to being a leader also would have been different. Maybe it would have been smoother than it was because as it turns out, leadership is a lot harder than I assumed it was. And maybe I should give that CEO a break. Hi, my name is Cindy Brummer and I'm the CEO and creative director of a product design agency called Standard Beagle. And I'm still learning every day how to be a better product leader. And you would think that after 10 years, I would have this down. But there's always something to work on and try to make better. And maybe my experience as someone who dove headfirst into something that I didn't have a clue about is why I was immediately drawn to the TV show Ted Lasso. So if you're not familiar, Ted Lasso is Apple's show that uh, released in 2023, the, the third and last season. And if you've never seen it, it is about an American football coach named Ted Lasso, who is recruited to coach a professional British soccer team, except he barely knows anything about soccer. Uh, he gets a lot of you know, flack for that. But despite the naysayers and the doubters, Ted dives in. He immediately spots problems in team dynamics and works to help every individual be their best self, no matter if the team wins or loses. And the more I watch, the more I realize how much I can learn about being a better product leader from this show. And I honestly wish it had been around when I was starting to hire employees and trying to create a company culture. I kind of wonder if any of my screw-ups and hard lessons could have been avoided with just a little wisdom, even if it's from a fictional TV character. I want to share what I believe are the three most important lessons from the show that product leaders can learn from. And hopefully it will help you on your leadership journey. Lesson number one, have courage to make tough and unpopular decisions. Product leadership requires bravery. It takes courage to make that tough decision. Now, in one episode, Ted makes a really tough decision. He decides to bench the star player because that player wasn't playing as a team member. It turned out to be the right decision, but at the time, almost nobody agreed with it. Ted took a lot of heat for that. 
And it wasn't until they won the game that the people decided that his decision wasn't bad at all. When you have a hard decision to make, do you have the courage to act on it? This has been the topic of discussion among a business leaders group that I'm in. Our facilitator asked us one day what decision we had been putting off and why. And as it turns out, we put off making decisions for a variety of reasons. Some of them are timing, logistics, money. But what really stood out to me were the emotional reasons that we avoid making tough decisions. Things like fear, perception from others, loss of status. When emotion gets tied up in decision making, it can be all but impossible to take action on something. Now, decision making frameworks are intended to help us use objective information when making decisions, but what if emotions get in the way? And invariably, that's what we face. So sometimes we need a shot of courage to get moving. So here's an example from my own work. One time I had a client that was bullying me about a project. She was gaslighting me and told me that we had done everything wrong. I set up several same page meetings with her to address her complaints and listen to her feedback. But eventually I was at this point where I just had to make a tough decision. Do I fire her and move on, which would save my own sanity as well as my team's? Or should I finish out the project so that we wouldn't lose the client or the money and potentially harm our reputation? I agonized for days and nights. And this is where the emotion was getting tied up in my decision making. Now, I finally decided that I needed to fire that client, but I felt a lot of fear. So I sought out support from my partner and my network, and I scripted out how I would have that conversation. In the end, I told the client that we needed to part ways. Now, the conversation didn't go exactly as I imagined that it would, but the relationship ended peacefully. And I think that I ended up gaining some respect for my team. I certainly saw a lot of relief. Now, before Ted benched that player that I mentioned, he runs into the stands to ask Rebecca, his boss, if she would support his decision. Sometimes having the support of our colleagues helps give us a little shot of additional courage that we product leaders need. All right, the second lesson, treasure accountability. Accountability is a central theme in Ted Lasso. In various story arcs, the characters discuss the impact of accountability or not being accountable. And in one example, there's a character named Keely. She finds out that the boss, Rebecca, has lied to Ted about hiring a paparazzi photographer to take pictures of him and embarrass him publicly. So Keely demands that Rebecca take responsibility and tell Ted what she's done. Product leaders need to do more than say that accountability is important. They need to treasure it. Patrick Lencioni's book, The Five Dysfunctions of the Team, right, you know, he talks about the avoidance of accountability. It's one of the key reasons that teams struggle. Now, according to Lencioni, accountability means the willingness of team members to call each other out on actions that could have a negative effect, and the effects can build up. When teams don't have enough conversations, they may not speak up when they feel like they're doing more work than other people, or they may not understand expectations, or there may be tension in the air, and it becomes a toxic work environment that is really hard to deal with and work in. So product leadership includes shaping the culture of the team to encourage accountability. We should be clear about our expectations and be sure to publish those expectations in a central place and make sure that everyone knows that they're there. For example, my company has an internal wiki where we publish them. You should also review team members' project regularly. That annual review is not enough. Nothing should be a surprise to the team member. When that team member isn't meeting expectations, leaders should let them know sooner rather than waiting and letting it linger because it can do real harm to the team. And then leaders also need to take responsibility for those improvements. Create an environment where the team can have open and honest conversations. Don't allow negativity to fester. You have to deal with it openly and appropriately. I learned a lesson about accountability the hard way. 
For years, I tolerated an employee who was speaking negatively about our clients behind their backs, and I should not have tolerated that. This person ended up influencing other people in the team, and I noticed that our overall performance was dropping. It also started to affect our reputation. So I start now looking back and thinking, I bet Ted Lasso would have handled it a specific way. And here's what we did. We set clear expectations about how we speak about client work and handle their requests. And we established a core value called empathetic listening. And we encouraged the team to lean into client requests with curiosity. Then we talked about the core values meaning regularly. Next, we established a weekly team meeting to deal with issues and hold team members accountable. Now, eventually, our employee left. Because as it turns out, A side effect of accountability is that the right people stay on the team and the wrong people tend to move on to their next role. And then finally, our third lesson, be vulnerable. Now, I have a favorite quotable line from Ted Lasso, and it comes from a character who is the team psychologist, uh, Dr. Fieldstone. She talks with Ted about the benefit of sharing and remembering tough memories. She says, the truth shall set you free but first it will piss you off. Vulnerability is a central theme of Ted Lasso. There's this masculine mystique around hiding feelings, but the show illustrates how tough it is um, and also beneficial for everyone to embrace vulnerability. So at its core, the characters show that vulnerability, you know, allows them to help everyone develop trust and growing friendships. So how do you feel about vulnerability? Now, there are leaders who feel that emotion and vulnerability are weaknesses. In fact, I have a peer who thinks that I share my feelings and emotions a little too much because honestly, I have no poker face. So that means that my team can tell when I'm having a bad day, even when I don't intend it. As a leader, I know that if I don't say anything about what I'm feeling, my team will assume that I'm upset with them. And that could really hurt their productivity and lead to wrong assumptions. So instead, I've learned to let my team know what's happening. I'll admit when I'm having a bad day. I may not share every detail, but I share enough so that they know what's going on. For example, I might tell them that I'm worried about a client or maybe when I'm dealing with family stuff. I found that vulnerability isn't a weakness. It's my superpower. Vulnerability is how I connect with my team and help develop trust. It shows my team that I make mistakes too. And when I make mistakes, I'm willing to own up to them and be held accountable. Being vulnerable may be harder for some product leaders though than others. I'm comfortable sharing because I've had lots and lots of practice, but many years ago, it wasn't so easy. And it's certainly not easy when I'm having to do that in front of people that I respect and I don't want to disappoint. So vulnerability requires courage too. Ted learns this lesson over an entire season of the show because he's afraid to open up and share about an event in his childhood that's affecting him. And it takes time for him to learn to trust Dr. Fieldstone. Once he does though, he starts to feel better and to heal. As leaders and women, we're often discouraged from showing vulnerability because we're told it makes us look weak. And I don't think that's always true. It makes us human. When we make courageous decisions, hold our teams accountable, and show who we really are, it amplifies our leadership power and draws people to us. There's a reason why people love Ted Lasso, both as a show and as a character. He embodies these qualities. So growing these qualities, it's not easy. They're not necessarily going to come overnight. But once we master them, it will help us draw our teams together and make our work just that much more successful. Thank you so much.